Greggy, so I'll, I'll let you. I was actually the one that dropped the ball here, so I was supposed to queue up the segment first, and we were going to look at who you're talking to. But in the end, I've got your smiling face, and I'm thankful for it. So, uh, you know, talk to us here about the amazing tradition that we have as the Ironman Foundation, and that is something that is beyond all of us. We, we race for more. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit and some of these odds we overcome. Yeah, and another beautiful day in Kailua Kona, guys. Thanks for having me again, the third amigo. Yeah, one of the great traditions of the Ironman World Championship is the celebration of athletes who are racing for something bigger than themselves. They race with purpose to overcome odds, to change lives, and in Ironman Foundation terms, they race for more. Over the years, we've all been deeply inspired by the stories of many heroic athletes. Sebastian Bellin is a former professional basketball player who has played on the Belgian national team. He's overcome incredible odds and set incredible goals. Let's take a look at this. Iola Mao, Keep On Living, the theme of the 2020 Kona Ironman Championships. It's become an inspiration. You know, I found myself on a hospital bed, uh, found myself disabled. Uh, for the rest of my life after surviving the Brussels terrorist attacks and I needed something. I needed kind of this pipe dream to stay focused on. I had a choice whether to be a victim, whether to let, to let that uh, a terrorism act uh, change my life for the worst. But I decided I was going to do everything in my power to change it for the best. So I kept on living uh, for my wife, for my daughters. Um, I wanted to show also that uh, surviving and uh, keep on living, sometimes this can be a challenge, but it's through challenges that life teaches you some of the most amazing lessons. I decided that one day I was determined to be able to finish an Ironman. And I aimed for the biggest one, the one in Hawaii. And so it became my, my obsession. It became my uh, determination, my source of inspiration to one day finish it um, uh, as a disabled athlete, as someone who doesn't feel anything anymore in one of my legs. But uh, I really wanted to uh, finish it in honor of all the other survivors and those who aren't here anymore um, from March 22nd, 2016. I thought that it'd be a, a great way to pay my respect by challenging myself to achieve one of the hardest endurance races in the world. I wanted to wish the very best to everyone racing. I wanted to uh, challenge him to keep uh, keep on training hard. It's through, uh, it's through these challenges that life teaches us some of the most amazing lessons. I hope to see you all very soon and definitely next year in Kona and uh, wish you all the very best. Aloha. Well, another incredible story. Uh, you would uh, agree with me, but coming to us live from Belgium right now, here's Sebastian Belisev. Thank you very much and good afternoon and uh, for joining us today. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm a lot better. Uh, you know, I'd rather be where, you, where you're at right now. It's probably the exact opposite in terms of weather, Belgian weather and Hawaiian weather. I, I don't think you could get any different. I know. Well, we're celebrating Kona Week while you're watching the classics, so, you know, in Belgium anyway, so that's another story. But uh, our theme, uh, you know, this year, E Ola Mao, uh, sounds like an everyday mantra uh, for you, right? Yeah, you know, keep on living uh, when, when life gives you a second chance. Um, it's it's pretty hard to, uh, to not seize it. Like, like I said, I, I think it may sound strange, but I was... I was lucky to be so close to death. You know, the closer you are to death, the more you realize how lucky you are to still be alive. And when you have that gratefulness in you every day, well, yeah, you just keep on living. You want to make it the best of the second chance. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can't even imagine, but um, it's an incredible story. We'll get into a little bit of it uh, just down the road here. But tell us about your basketball career because you uh, you know played for the Belgian national team, but you grew up in Brazil, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, my basketball career actually, I, I would say in many 
in many ways kind of popped out of nowhere. You know, I was, uh, my father was an international business. So uh, I was born in Brazil. And I think there, you know, I think they lock you up if, uh, if you don't play soccer at a young age. So, uh, you know, I, my oh, first who's... love was, uh, was, 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 uh, was bas- well, I mean, was uh, soccer and tennis. And, um, and then I started just, I kept growing, <laughs> I guess. I kept growing and uh, I moved to the States. I lived for the States in a while. And in the States, you know, if you're, if you're over six, five or six, eight, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm six, nine. Yeah. And you don't play basketball. That's also sacrilegious, you know? So I was just getting just remark after remark. Like, Dude, do you play basketball? And I finally, I was like, yes, I was able to say yes. I was able to answer yes. And, um, I got, a, I was, I was on a Belgian junior national team, got a scholarship to play in the States. And, uh, at first it was most, mostly just wanting to, uh, you know, just go to school and have fun and play basketball. And then, um, yeah, I, one thing led to another and I ended up playing 15 years professional in Italy and in Belgium and all that. So can't complain. Oh, that's great. You're bringing all your athleticism over to, over to the Ironman. You could have been a volleyball player, beach volleyball player too, but on a serious note, uh, you know, we're coming up on the fifth anniversary of the, the Brussels attacks uh, back in March of 2016. As you approach that milestone, tell us about the uh, the work that you've been doing with the Ironman Foundation as well as the Challenged Athletes Foundation. Yeah, I don't know how much work I'm already doing for them. You know, um, I, I realize that those are two foundations that I will be spending the rest of my life, you know, really focusing on. Um, and I think they complement each other immensely because, uh, you know, when I was on the hospital bed, you know, I, I needed something to grasp to kind of, uh, stay positive. It's, it's very, it's very hard to, you know, be a professional athlete and from one day to the next, um, just find yourself handicapped, you know, disabled for the rest of your life. And, uh, you need a lot of positive energy and, uh, you know, it would have been it would have been much easier for the doctors and surgeons to just amputate because I had such open leg wounds and um, uh, they were very uh, cautious of infections and uh, before putting any metal in my body. So we finally were able to, um, yeah, after 13 operation surgeries, we were able to keep one of those. You know, I have a huge metal rod in my left leg, and I have a mm-hmm. huge metal rod in my right femur is all metal. And, uh, so I was like, well, I, I'm, I'm full of, I'm full of iron. I might as well, I mean, I'm, I'm halfway iron man already, you know, so I'm, <laughs> I might as well just keep on trucking. And, um, so iron man, iron man really became a, uh, a goal, you know, you need a goal, you need objectives in life. And, uh, yeah. it's an amazing community of people that just, you know, simple, good people that, uh, that uh, that want to race, that want to um, that want to push themselves, and um, and then I also needed, you know, I think when you're when you're a survivor, um, I found through Challenged Athletes Foundation, I found it, there's always someone who's got it much worse than you, and uh, and and there's there's some pretty amazing people, you know, there's some many in in CAF, there's some incredible athletes. And just when you think you got it tough, you meet some people who have done, you know, Ironmans who, who, who don't even have legs, you know, and uh, I may not feel anything in my legs, but I still have them. And uh, so there's, it's a great motivation to, 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 uh, to meet these people who never complain, never feel sorry for themselves. And so the Ironman became a, uh, a goal, you know, the Ironman race, Kona. And then CAF really became my inspiration of uh, surrounding myself with just beautiful people who, uh, who, were, who were given a much worse, you know, deck of cards, a hand of cards, and yet, you know, keep smiling and keep trucking. Yeah, you know what, Seb, I, I don't think it's by coincidence that uh, you've been you know, brought together with the Iron Man and, um, you know, the two mantras, I think that they go together. Anything is possible uh, because what you've done, you've shown that it is possible. And secondly, e olamal, keep on living. You didn't give up. And you, exactly. So you just, you know, you, you, you drug on something that was out there and uh, just didn't give up. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Um and uh, how's your training going now? I, I hear you've got a pretty uh, tough coach, right? 
Yeah. When did you when did you win it again, Greg? What, what year did you win it? Not the same year that uh, Luke Van Leeder won, but uh, I won in '94, <laughs> Luke '96 uh, and '98, I believe. And I think '96 and '99. And, uh, yeah. yeah, Luke was, Luke is an amazing, you know, I've, uh, I've had a lot of coaches, you know, top coaches in, in my life and, uh, most champions, um, don't, my experience is most champions don't, don't become, uh, great coaches. You know, when you're at the top, top of your sport, it's hard to pass that on that knowledge, something that came so naturally to you. And I think Luke is an exception, you know, Luke, uh, Luke is just a phenomenal coach and uh, a fellow Belgian. And, uh, you know, we teamed up because you know, people people forget, but Belgium is uh, 10 and a half million people. It's little Belgium. And, uh, you know, March 22nd, the terrorist attacks was was our 9-11. And, yeah, exactly. uh, and when 34 people died, you know, that day, well, uh, I, I, I wanted to honor them and, um, and I couldn't, I couldn't be, I couldn't be guided by a better person than Luke Van Lieder. So yeah, he's, he's not an easy coach, but he does a fantastic job. Cause I'm a, I'm a fragile, you know, I'm a fragile guy. And so he knows when to push, when to, uh, when to kind of uh, decelerate, accelerate. And it's a, it's a really nice partnership and I'm lucky to have him on my team. Yeah, you're very much so, very much so. And uh, who wants an easy coach, right? And uh, yes, yeah, so that's fantastic. <laughs> Just wanted to uh, make mention of one thing. You mentioned that, uh, you know, Belgium has 10 million people, but you've also got some of the greatest Ironman triathletes ever. Marino van Hoenacker, Freddy van Leerder, Bart Arnitz, Luke van Leerder, Ruud Kebeke. I can go on and on and on. There's so many more that I can I could mention. But, uh, hey, listen, we just wanted to thank you very much uh, for having this time with you today. Um, your leadership as an Ironman Foundation ambassador. And most of all, thank you for your courage and inspiration. Much aloha to you there, Sebi, and um, best of luck in the future. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me, Greg. Talk to you soon. All right. Thank you very much, Seb. So, Michael, Didi, another one of our great stories, inspiration. I got goosebumps just, uh, you know, thinking about it and talking with Sebi. An incredible athlete that grew up as a basketball player, onto an Ironman athlete, and uh, now a foundation ambassador. So, uh, another one of our great stories. I'm going to throw it back to you guys. Thank you so much, Greg, and thanks to Sebastian. Great to see you both.